All right. Well, it is that time. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, we are here to uh, do a session called Personal Archiving Live. My name is Matthew. I'm Shadrik. I'm Christy. And we're with the Tampa Hillsborough County Public Library. We really appreciate you attending. Uh, first things first, we wanted to let you know that uh, if you would like to participate, if you're watching this live, awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, you can. You can put a question or a comment in the question section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, or if you're using the uh, GoToWebinar app, uh, there should be a question section there as well. And we will do our best to get those questions answered for you at the end of the session. Um, also, uh, to let you know ahead of time, there is going to be a survey that will pop up at the very end when we, when we end the webinar. Um, please take just a couple of minutes to fill that out. It's very, very short, and it gives us very valuable feedback, not only what an awesome job that Chrissy and Shedrick are doing, but also helps us plan for future events, and that is very useful indeed. So without further ado, I would like to kick it on over to Shedrick and Chrissy. All right, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Hi, welcome to Personal Archiving Live. Uh, my name is Shedrick Battle. I'm one of the history and genealogy librarians here at the Robert W. Saunders Senior Public Library. And I am joined by... I'm Christy Toth. I too am one of the history and genealogy librarians here at the Robert W. Saunders Senior Public Library. And we're gonna go ahead and turn off our webcam and start the presentation. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you again for joining us for a personal archiving live. All right, so a little bit about this program. Uh, this is done in partnership with the City of Tampa uh, for the Archives Awareness Week program. Uh, Archives Awareness Week 2020 is held from July 12th through the 18th. And for more information about this event, log on to the City of Tampa's website at tampagov.net slash AAW. So a little bit about this program. Uh, today's program a focus will be on archiving memories, documents, and correspondence that are already in a digital format. Uh, this class will also cover archiving easy to digitize documents like photos, medical records, financial records, and things that are easy to scan and save. For an in-depth information and resources on genealogical and historical archiving and research, visit the Florida History and Genealogy Library at the John F. Germany Public Library once normal business hours resume. So let's get into it. Why would you archive digitally? Well, there are a few different reasons. Uh, the first of which is access. Uh, it's important that records and files can be readily available uh, no matter where the physical files actually live. Another reason may be searchability. Uh, digitally organizing files allows for easier searching. Uh, that way, a file is just a few clicks away. Another reason is protection. Physical files can become damaged or destroyed so converting important documents to a digital format can be vital, especially during an emergency. And lastly, space. Archiving saves you physical space in your home and digital space on your computer. So these are just a few of the reasons. Uh, towards the end of the presentation, we're gonna cover some additional resources uh, and give you a few websites that will have tips on how to archive digitally and uh, other resources you can use on your digitization and personal archiving journey. So what can be archived? In this particular presentation, we are going to discuss photos, audio and video materials, personal records like medical, financial documents, uh, et cetera, uh, social media, and email. So up uh, first, let's talk a little bit about archiving photos. So the first thing you want to do is plan ahead. Organizing and digitizing photos takes a lot of time. You make sure that you plan enough time to organize, scan, and tag your photos. Uh, 
Archiving photos takes a lot longer than you would think. Uh, so take time to organize and label them appropriately so that they're easier to find later. You will also want to save photos in multiple places. Uh, transfer photos off of portable storage devices like flash drives and memory cards to portable hard drives or cloud services. And of course, this goes along with backing up photos. Use a cloud service that automatically backs up photos taken on a smartphone. Uh, there are two major cloud services, uh, iCloud, uh, if you have an Apple device, or Google Photos, if you have an Android device. Uh, Google Photos is an excellent example of an app that does the hard work for you. Uh, any photos taken on your smartphone will automatically be saved in the app, making it easier to sort, tab, or archive photos. Uh, and iCloud works similarly. Uh, every Apple user gets a certain amount of uh, megabytes of free iCloud source space, but you can also upgrade to larger plans uh, depending on your needs for your own personal archiving or if you have a lot of photos uh, and you have a family plan, you may want to consider that. And the lastly, this is something that's going to come out throughout the program, delete. Delete, 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 we say. Uh, not every photo is the keeper. Don't keep bad photos or ones that you'll never look at again, like screenshots, for example. Uh, it'll clutter your archive and make it harder to find the photos you want to keep. Uh, there are also apps that you can use that'll search your phone and automatically delete any duplicate photos, blurry photos, uh, things like that. And that'll help you also free up space uh, when you're archiving. All right, so next, we're going to talk a little bit about archiving audio and video materials. So when it comes to archiving audio and video, you'll want to convert old recordings to newer formats. Uh, physical files like CDs, cassette tapes, and VHS tapes deteriorate over time. There are converters available for purchase online that are relatively inexpensive, uh, and some institutions may have equipment that can be rented for conversion. However, the library is not uh, one of those places. Uh, unfortunately, conversion isn't a service that we offer. Uh, archiving audio and video files in the same place uh, is helpful. You'll want to transfer files off of portable storage devices like old cameras or memory cards to a single portable hard drive or cloud service. Uh, you'll also want to think about all of your old cameras, old phones, old computers, etc., and try to archive all of your files in the same place so that they're easier to find. And you'll want to make sure to update archives every few years. Technology changes rapidly and it's very important to save the files in the most current available formats. Your original files are your backups, so keep an audio video on the memory card or flash drive just in case. And like we say, keep the original format because sometimes the original format may last longer than the digital copy. Next up, we're going to talk about archiving personal records. Uh, personal records are things like financial, medical, automobile, tax, and insurance records are the most important personal records to be kept. However, you don't need to keep every single statement you've ever received. Keep the policy, not your monthly bill, for example. So, first thing you want to think about when archiving personal record is considering what needs to be saved only keep essential records or files that could be needed at a later date. You'll also want to consider security. When thinking about security, personal records have very sensitive data, so you'll want to make sure they're safe in a secure way. Cloud services may not be best for storing personal records as they are stored on a server that could be hacked. Consider a portable hard drive or flash drive that is kept in a secure area in your home. Thirdly, delete files that are no longer needed. Not only does this keep your files from becoming cluttered, it lowers your security risk. You don't necessarily need files on a car or an insurance policy that you no longer own. Personal identifiers such as birth certificates, social security cards, driver's license, etc., should never be copied unless absolutely needed. This lessens your risk. So that's why it's important to remember that you don't have to 
digitally archive everything. Some items like those we mentioned, uh, personal identification items, are better kept in their original paper or physical format. Uh, for example, in the cases of things like birth certificates, um, a lot of times they're very hard to copy or if not impossible. So you would actually just need the original anyway. And you always want to ensure, no matter what type of archiving you're doing, you'll want to ensure that the most up-to-date file types are being used. Uh, file types become obsolete. Remember zip drives? So make sure current file types are being used. And as always, keep your archived items safe. Make sure the sensitive data is password protected and not stored on cloud services. And keep external hard drives in a safe place always especially important when archiving personal records. All right, so next let's talk a little bit about archiving social media, blogs, and websites. So your digital footprint is enormous and this can take a while. Um, there's a lot of information out there, especially if you're an avid social media user. Uh, so first, you'll want to identify all of your personal content on the internet. Uh, find all of your current and old blogs, social media sites, and websites. Next, consider what needs to be archived. Only keep the information that you feel is especially important. For example, uh, you probably don't need to archive that uh, MySpace page that you created in middle school. To cut down on clutter, consider keeping only the essentials. Next, determine how to export the data. Some sites have instructions on their platforms. On others, you may have to do some digging. Facebook, for example, has information about creating an archive or archiving uh, your Facebook profile itself that's available on their website. Uh, other platforms may have their own instructions as well. Uh, let's see, there are also, you may all also have to do some research on to determine how to archive specific types of websites, for example, an old GeoCities page. Uh, again, at the end of this presentation, we'll have a few resources that you can look into about how to archive more personal materials uh, online. And lastly, consider a social media archiving service. Uh, this may be something you'd want to do. Uh, it's especially helpful if you use a lot of social media platforms and want someone else to do the hard work for you. Uh, so many companies do have an archiving service. Uh, these companies will archive all of your social media in one place. Of course, that's usually for a fee. All right, and the last document type that we're going to talk about archiving is archiving email. So most build, um, excuse me, most email providers have a built-in archiving service. Check with your email provider to see how they archive data. Some email services automatically archive older emails for you. Uh, every service is different, so check the settings in your email and see how to set up rules to automatically archive your data. Um, for example, the library uses uh, Outlook, uh, which archives our emails after six months. Uh, anything that isn't deleted, that is. Uh, anything in your deleted items folder will automatically clear out after 90 days. Uh, it's also important to remember to keep per business and personal email separate. Most companies have strict data protection rules, so it's important not to mix business with pleasure emails. Uh, most businesses will automatically archive your emails, and so there's no need to double up on that work of archiving those particular types of emails. Another thing to consider is, do you really need the email? Uh, sometimes it's best to archive the attachment on the email and not the email itself. For example, if your insurance company sends you a document, archive the document and delete the email. And lastly, once again, uh, delete, delete, delete. And in this case, delete and unsubscribe. A lot of personal email is junk that isn't needed. So you always want to be sure to update your junk and spam filters, uh, unsubscribe from emails you don't want, delete emails you don't need. Um, 
So that's, and unsubscribe especially is very important because you'll, sometimes you may sign up for things and then years later, you're still getting dozens of email a day for a service that you may no longer be interested in or use. Um, so personal archiving, no matter what type of document, is all about saving what's important and reducing the uh, clutter. All right. So from this point, I'm going to turn it over to Chrissy, and she's going to tell us about holding on to the original format and putting it all together. Chrissy? Thank you, Shedri. Yes, hold on to the original format because things happen. Got to keep the original formats just in case you need to make copies or your digital archive is destroyed. And a good example would be back in the days when we recorded our special moments like a wedding or a vacation on super eight millimeter film or VHS. Then we started reformatting to the next newest uh, technology like onto disk and into personal computers. Chances are the original VHS would most likely get thrown away. Then when that disk eventually deteriorates or, or the computer crashes, black screen of death, you'll wish you had that VHS again. So yes, you should keep transferring your copy to the most recent updated format, but be sure to keep your original somewhere safe, such as archival film can organizers or video cassette boxes. Uh, be selective in what you decide to keep. Cornerstone moments are great, but skip the TV shows taped on VHS. Chances are those shows are available on DVD box sets, on-demand viewing or on streaming platforms, or even at your local public library. Next, keep photos and documents indoors in a cool and dry place. The lower the temperature, the longer your items will last. So yes, keep your items indoors, not out in the garage, not in the attic or a shed. Ideal temperature uh, is 50 to 60 degrees, but that's only if you live in a museum, it's not realistic. Uh, 67 to 75 degrees is more true to life. Monitor relative humidity. Low relative humidity leads to dryness. A relative humidity below 15% can cause brittleness. Whereas here in Florida, it is the complete opposite with a high relative humidity creating moisture. Mold growth begins at a relative humidity of 65%. The ideal uh, relative humidity should be at 40%. Um, keep items away from sources of leaks and keep on a shelf so they don't get wet. Again, things happen. There might be an incident with plumbing, leaks, and flooding, so you want to make sure your items are off the floor and onto a, a shelving system. Also, check your ceiling for watermarks uh, to make sure that there's no leaks in your roof and be diligent with your housekeeping because moisture attracts pests such as silverfish and roaches, and they destroy papers and photos. Uh, lastly, use ar archival free ar uh, containers that will fit and support the items. Uh, avoid cardboard boxes, banker boxes, and Rubbermaid storage. They don't breathe and the chemical breakdown will cause oxidation and ruin your ephemera. Hollinger boxes, manila folders, and tissue paper are safe and always use the right container for your items and never overstuff. Overstuffing can create items to bend and bow to irreversible results. Mylar page savers that you find like at uh, office supply stores are okay, you know, page savers, uh, page protectors, and they're good for a quick fix, only temporary, but polyester sleeves are better because they can uh, be custom ordered by size or cut to fit. Lastly, label your fol folders and, uh, with pencils or archival ink pens and keep everything from direct sunlight. Um, at the end, I will show you all some examples uh, uh, of this presentation of what some of these archival uh, container storages uh, items are. And next we're gonna move it to putting it all together. So just to recap, uh, only archive important or treasured items. So remember, not everything needs to be archived. Don't be afraid to delete items that are no longer needed. Update your archives often. It's best to stay on top of your archives so they don't become unruly. You may have to make new tags or reorganize in information. Um, next point is ensure that the most up-to-date file types are being used. File types eventually become obsolete. Again, y'all remember uh, zip drives? Yeah, make sure that the file types you are using are the most up to date. Keep your archived items safe. Make sure that sensitive data is password protected. 
Try not to store sensitive data on cloud service and keep external hard drives in a safe place. And lastly, hold on to the original format as we previously discussed. Okay, here's the additional resources that we were talking about earlier. Um, check out these additional e-resources for further information on personal archiving. So first we have a website here from the Library of Congress. They have a, a web page on personal archiving covering the subjects we discussed today, including instructional video. The second website is from Michigan State University Libraries, where they provide guides on personal archiving, uh, everything you need to know about it, including their own PowerPoint on the subject, books, online resources, matting and framing, and suppliers of archival storage materials. And then the last website here is from Internet Archive. They're a nonprofit library that offers free accounts to store your digitized archives or share with others. And lastly, here are some ebook titles that we selected on personal archiving that you can check out from the library. Uh, one is by Donald T. Hawkins, Personal Archiving, Preserving Your Digital Heritage, which is available on Overdrive, and uh, Kenneth Kim with Conserving, Preserving, and Restoring Your Heritage, a professional's advice, and that is available on Hoopla. All right, and before we start the question and answer session, I'd like to show you those archival materials I would mentioned during the uh, holding on to original format section. Go back to the webcam here. Okay, so this is a Hollinger box and it Hello. had its- Hey, Christy. Oh. Yes. Christy, sorry to interrupt. Uh, this is Matthew. Hey, would you guys mind uh, turning off the Q&A slide so we can see that even bigger on the screen? Oh, for heaven's sakes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Yeah, we can go ahead and close that. There we go. All right, can you see us now? Uh, no, but hold on one second. I can fix it. Uh, hold, bear with us, everybody. Okay. Should be good now. All right, sorry for the technical difficulties, y'all. <laughs> um, this is an example of a Hollinger box. It's acid-free material, and you'll see it's got metal hinges to keep it together. There is no glue on here to really uh, you know, oxidize or mess up the materials inside. They'll transfer and uh, really make it age terribly and, and destroy it. On the inside, you'll see that there's manila folders. Those two are archival. Uh, materials to use that again won't oxidize, won't mess up your 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 materials. And inside, you'll see written in pencil. And I'm going to show you the inside. It's being held. It's being held up by the same material that this box is made out of. And you'll see it's holding the Manilas upright, nice, nice and, and nice and firmly. It's not going to the items that are in these folders. They're not going to lose their shape. They're going to stay wonderful for a very long time. And real quick, here's an example of a polyester sleeve. And the great thing about this is that unlike a page protector, this has a side that opens and I don't have to compromise the edges. So my, my historic, you know, my, in this case, I don't have to worry about cutting the edges, clipping the edges. It's going to open up, fit in just beautifully, and seal just right. And if I want to, I can uh, go to the paper cutter and cut a really nice edge that's closer that'll fit to a T. But other than that, this is ready to get filed away into a um, acid-free container and live the rest of its life still intact. And uh, now we're ready for your question and answers. All right. Shadrik, you still with us? Yes, I'm right here. <laughs> Roll right in. Uh, yeah. So we do have some questions, but before uh, we get to them, I want to go ahead and pay, uh, put our contact link. Um, there are a few different ways to get in contact with uh, with us through the library. Um, if you go to hcplc.org slash about slash contact, there's a few different options there. You can call us or text us. We also have an Ask a Librarian service where you can actually ask a librarian different kinds of questions and interact that way um, and find out about other things that we have going on, such as our summer reading series, which ends at the end of this month, and other programs and resources and that kind of thing. So I put that link in the chat. You can click on it and this should just navigate back to go to webinar to uh, see the rest of the questions. If you do have additional questions, 
We have a few minutes, so go ahead and put them in the questions section, again, of your GoToWebinar control panel if you're watching this live, or your questions section on the app. Um, so the first question we have here is, oh, just a, just a, a housekeeping question, really. Will, will this be recorded? Yes, this session will be recorded, um, and we will be posting it on our YouTube channel for the library um, maybe later this week, but I would probably look for it uh, next week on Monday or Tuesday, and it should be posted by then. Um, and so you'll be able to review it uh, or as well as share it with friends and families and, and uh, colleagues. Um, the other question though was about humidity. Um, I think it was you, Chrissy, you were talking about humidity. We, the question yeah. is basically, we're in Florida, it's a very humid place even inside, and are there things that you can do to control the humidity in certain spaces when you're trying to preserve certain types of things? Absolutely, and that's one of the biggest challenges with uh, personal archiving or if you, uh, you know, if you're in a museum and you have to take care of a history house, it's a big challenge here in Florida. And uh, there is a thing called a hygrometer, and that measures the relative humidity in your home. And so, and uh, I know that these days, uh, so, uh, the brand new heating and um, cooling, central, central air and, and uh, heating, they come with hygrometers. So sometimes it's not necessary, not necessary to make your house more cooler than it is just to watch the humidity. So sometimes that's like a two-in-one with the newer systems. And also you can pick up these things at like uh, archival museum supp supply stores like uh, Gaylord, uh, Gaylord Archival, and you can uh, check them out at gaylord.com. Uh, and back when I was in uh, library school, um, and my, my specialty was in archival management, uh, I knew another poor college student <laughs> that actually saved like the aluminum silicate that was like in vitamins or like in new purses and stuff like that and actually <laughs> would put them in his boxes, in his uh, Hollinger boxes in his closet and that until he could, he could, you know, afford something better, that was like a temporary fix. And even those stupid, uh, was it, the, the dry damps, I know as silly as they sound, they actually do have a little merit to them, but it's just a good temporary fix. Excellent, thank you. Um, oh, was there something else? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So um, the other question we had was about um, uh, labeling. I think uh, you were showing the different folders and things written out in pencil. And uh, the question is, is it better to use like label maker or is it better to write things out? Honestly, it's better to write it out. And I would suggest using pencil or um, archival ink pen, like a Pelican pen. Uh, the reason why I would say no to the labels is because in time, the label, the, the adhesive on the label will uh, oxidate the, the folder. It'll eventually get brittle and, and nasty and or it'll flake off in time. Or it could also like do, do damage to anything that's in contact with. So stick with old fashioned pencil or if you'd rather use a pen. Yeah, archival ink is the way to go. Okay, great. Um, we have a share uh, from uh, one of our attendees. Uh, I'll just read it as is because I think you guys can uh, add anything you want to add to it. Um, that a legit suggestion uh, saving the silica packs. A uh, curator suggested that idea to them. Uh, you use what you got is what they say. Exactly. exactly. Use what you got. <laughs> Thank you very much for that share. We appreciate that. Uh, another uh, question here from our attendees, uh, other website options uh, in addition to Gaylord for supplies, uh, for archiving purchases, boxes, et cetera? I personally am a fan of the Gaylord, <laughs> but um, if you visit that website that you saw earlier, if you have the uh, complimentary PowerPoint that was provided with this, um, this, this course, uh, if you visit that Michigan State University website, they list other options. Gay they even list Gaylord Archival themselves, but there are more options too. And I should mention, uh, uh, each of you attending tonight should get a follow-up email with some of those links. Uh, so you should be getting some of those um, sent to you when you get your follow-up. Thank you for attending uh, Personal Archiving Live. Um, let's see here. We have a minute, so why don't we do just a quick shout out. Uh, I'm going to put another uh, link in here to our genealogy and family and history page. And Shedrick and, and Chrissy, if you could both mention uh, one, one of your favorite resources on that page for people to check out, uh, since that is your world. Um, what, what would you like them to know is there so they can visit it? 
Okay, uh, well, one cool thing to check out, uh, this is something that actually just debuted yesterday. Uh, we now have a African American historical resources page uh, on the library website. So if you go to hcplc.org and click on the learning and research tab, and then in the history and genealogy section, uh, there is a page that features information about uh, resources relevant to African American history, uh, historical documents, archive, uh, genealogy aids, uh, things like that. And this just went live on the website uh, yesterday. Um, so uh, I had a hand in creating that. Uh, and we're pretty proud to host the African American History and Genealogy Research Library here at the Saunders branch. Uh, so be sure to uh, visit us and check it out when libraries are open once again. <laughs> I know we're all anxious for that day because that is that oh. is certainly a very special location. Chrissy? Oh, well, um, let's see. Right now, since uh, the libraries are, are on a hiatus right now, um, I would suggest, yes, tapping into any of our, our e-resources that's online, visit us at hcplc.org. Uh, since Shedrick and I work here at Saunders, we, we do have a very special thing here, very unique with the African American History and Genealogy Library. So don't forget that we also have uh, genealogy websites that are, or excuse me, web databases that are free to use, uh, including Ancestry.com, Family Tree, and there's even a African American uh, genealogy uh, database also that's, uh, I think it's by Yale, I think, but uh, yeah, the ProQuest. The ProQuest, yeah, yes, and it's, it's a really good resource to tap into. And of course, on Prejudice, I love our digital, our, our digital. Um, a collection. Yes, I do. Burger Brothers uh, and and also uh, our oral histories with our lives, our stories. It's just wonderful. It's a good it's a good view into what Tampa used to be and, and to where it is now. And uh, I'm glad she mentioned the uh, Burger Brothers archive. Uh, there is an Archive Awareness Week page on the library website, mm -hmm. uh, and the John F. Germany Library contributed uh, several Burger Brothers photos yes. uh, and other resources to that page, so be sure to check that out, as well as the City of Tampa's uh, website uh, for Archives Awareness Week 2020. All right, that's perfect, and I think that's a perfect place to, we're just a couple minutes over, but it's all fantastic, and so we hope that you will uh, go on and check out all those amazing resources, um, and just keep in contact with us and let us know. Like I said, fill out that survey. Let us know what else you'd like to hear, whether it be about genealogy or, or history or anything else within the library world. Even if you think we might not have a hand in it, you, uh, we have a, a lot of very passionate people who work in our group and, and we're very uh, anxious to explore those things for you. So thank you very much to both of you, Shadrik and Chrissy. Uh, and thank you all very much for attending tonight and have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.